The first rollout that we're going to cover is the biped rollout. With the biped selected, you'll see the biped rollout. And the first button we have is our figure mode. This is where we actually structure our biped, changing its shape and size, and adding additional bones to it if needed. Next to that, we have our footstep mode. In the biped, there are basically two methods of animating. You have a freeform method and a footstep method. The footstep mode basically allows you to animate with uh, footsteps within the scene, and we'll take a look at that when we get to the tool. The motion flow mode allows you to take uh, several clips of animations and string them together into a sequence. The mixer mode allows you to take, again, uh, clips of animation, but actually blend between the different clips to create a new and unique animation. Next to that, we have a biped playback. And the biped playback basically gets rid of everything in the viewport and recreates just a simple stickman figure for the animation. You can hit play on this one and you'll see that in the viewport. It takes them back to just a stickman. If we had animation applied to it, it would uh, create the animation for the character. This is just a great way of visual, uh, visualizing uh, the animation without having the additional elements on top of it. Next to that, we have a load file and a save file. Both of these allow us to load and save out a .bip file, which is a um, biped animation file. Um, by loading and saving, you can save out a file from one character, and then you could actually load that back onto, say, a character that's uh, a midget or a different uh, disproportionate character to the original, and it will retarget the motion to that character. Next to that, we have our convert button. The convert button allows us to convert between the two methods of freeform uh, animation and the footsteps animation. Next to that, we have a move all mode. The move all mode allows us to actually move the character independent of its original animation. So if there was walk cycle at the zero, zero, zero of the world, we could actually reposition it to a uh, another location and or rotate it in that location. Um, as long as our auto key is on, and then we could collapse that to make it move. You'll notice it snaps back because we haven't uh, have not our auto key on. This is really useful when you have a, a large sequence of characters in the scene, and you're just needing to move them around, position them as needed. We'll go outside of that mode, and below that we have modes and displays. If we open up this rollout, we'll see that we've got a modes group box. And this is a way that we can actually adjust some of the parameters for the modes that we work with. We have a rubber band mode, we have our scale stride mode. Um, this one's basically saying that if we're doing footsteps, and we'll see these later when we work with them, that we can actually rescale the foot to land on a footstep or stick with its original stride and go beyond the footstep. Uh, the in place mode allows us to actually reposition the character to a particular place, uh, the center of the world on the X or Y axis. So that if we were to have an animation that was offset or that the animation actually moved within the viewport but we needed it centered for a game specific, then we can actually do an in-place mode and the character gets bound to uh, the zero of the X and Y. This is very useful for game development where generally you're going to have animations exported from the center of your world and locked to the center of the world. You notice on the flyout, we have our X and we have our Y option as well. Below that, we have our display group box. And here we can actually change the, uh, the viewport display of our character. The first one we have is just our original bones. We can change this out to just our spline so that we can see the splines inside the scene. We can adjust that from the splines to the bones and splines so we can see both at the same time. For our display, we're going to leave it just at the bones. Next to that, we have our show footsteps. In this flyout, we can actually change how we see the footsteps. When we get to the footsteps, we'll look at it. We can change it from numbers and to hiding it, so depending on what your need is. Uh, the twisty links, if we had twisty links applied to the object, we can take those on and off. Next to that, we have the leg states. Uh, when this one is on, during the footsteps, you can actually display the move slide and plant for each of the, the feet at an appropriate frame. Next to that, we have our trajectory. Our trajectory, we can see that, visualize that here. If we were to have our auto key on, let's go ahead and just set a keyframe. We'll move the object to set a keyframe. And let's say we move the object down, set another keyframe. And if we want to visualize that trajectory, we can turn that on, 
and we can visualize the trajectory of that object in space. This is a great way to help see where you might be pinching or binding uh, your character. Uh, if it's on the rotational curve to find out even for your speed. It's a nice little visualization tool to help you with. Next to that we have our preferences. and our preferences we can set the footstep colors, um, we can set the trajectory, and we can also change uh, what gets used in the playback. And the playback inside of our biped rollout here. We can adjust how many bipeds actually get used. So if we're going back and forth, we can say visible bipeds, we could remove it from the list, or we can add it to the list. And our very last option here with the name, this is a very powerful little option and sometimes it gets overlooked. If you need to adjust the biped's name, you can adjust it from here. For instance, if an engine needed a different naming convention uh, for the first part of the name, not the hand or the right, we can adjust the bib to, let's say, our hero. And with our hero, we can go back through and any object that we select, it's now hero, left forearm, hero head, etc, etc. This is a great way to set up the character quickly if you need to change the, uh, the, the prefix, the first part of our, our name. Okay, that covers the biped rollout. Next thing we're going to do is start looking at them individually.